Okay, so Justice League. Right off the bat, even though I know Joss Whedon did some work on this, I'm glad that it didn't go all marvelly. I'm glad there wasn't a tremendous amount of humor. The nice thing is, most of the humor came from Barry Allen. Probably like 90, 95% of it from The Flash. Which makes sense. He's more of a happy-go-lucky character. It, it's okay for him to have more, more brevity in, in a lot of these sequences. Which was good. You know, it took a very... Once they start having the Parademon show up, and they show up a lot in multiple places all over the world, and they're kidnapping people, they're terrorizing people, it, my wife kind of went, they're most she jumped back. I mean, it's... It felt like a legitimate world invasion. Whether they were hitting the, the different locations, whether they were hitting... If you've seen the trailers, whether they are hitting Themyscira, whether they were hitting Atlantis, it felt like it made... It felt like an actual world invasion. Or they're attacking Metropolis, Gotham, other cities. It actually felt like a legitimate invasion of an outside force. And the fact that the team... Batman is fighting a pretty He's like, I, I can't fight. I, I have to bring in other people. I have to. He meets Aquaman, who is... Loner... Yeah, he is the epitome of the loner. My wife's like, he's kind of a douche. But once he finally turns around, like, becomes part of the team, you know, he, he plays his part well. He actually came off looking really good. Wonder Woman, usually she's the heart and center of the team, period. They struck absolute lightning gold with her. She is the centerpiece of the movie, which they probably went... Wonder Woman killed it. Everyone loved that. Okay, tweak of plans. Yeah. Gal, you're, you're the same. A lot of this movie is going to kind of rotate around things that you do. Which was nice. Batfleck, I actually like the fact that he did some more Bruce wayne -y bits and pieces. And he entirely admits he has no powers. The only way he can save the world is to bring people together who can save the world. That's the way of the world on its shoulders. Cyborg? They did just enough to let you know this is the character. This is the character. Not a lot of here's here's how it was made, here's me when I was a football star. No, it's here I am now. Same with the Flash. They talk about his background, like, so what happened to you? It was this? Yeah, alright. The two of them talk. And it's like a woman that seems to be like, so our origins are, boom. But Bear, Bear visits his dad a lot. So you know enough of his character that actually made sense. And they have Jim Gordon. He's in there for enough to be like, I use a bad signal to get you guys together to talk about some stuff. Main villain, Steppenwolf. I'm okay with the fact that he was entirely CGI. And that he felt different. He's an alien should feel different. All in all, this film was done very well. I actually like the fact that it was about two hours. It didn't think it went too long. It seemed to do just enough to go, here is the plot of the movie, trying to get items, the items located here, here, and here. Finland goes here, here, and here. It was, it was easy and to the point. They talk about before time when they battled Steppenwolf. So now I'm going to get more into the actual like movie itself, more uh, plot points. So I thought it was good. As good as Wonder Woman, it's close. I'm glad it doesn't feel like Marvel films because Marvel films should feel like Marvel films. DC films should be like DC films. Fox, X-Men films should feel like their own, their own beast. Deadpool should just be awesome by itself off in a corner. So here get some more spoilers into the film. Okay. So if you don't hear any more, I liked it, thought it was good. I know I heard DC fanboy, because there's guys in the background, but you know, whatever. I enjoyed it, thought it was very good. Could have been done better, yes, were there things that were questionable when it came to a graphical standpoint and visuals? Yes. I'll get into that when I get into more of the spoilers, but from that point, I thought it was done well. They covered a lot of ground with the right amount of depth that they can fill it in later. Fine with it. 
So the Amazons talk about the first time Steppenwolf came. To get the three mother boxes to combine them together, and it's pretty much a planet killer. So, Amazons had mother box. Atlanteans had mother box. The humans had mother box. Because they all joined forces. But they weren't the only ones. There were gods there too. Gods that shot large bolts of lightning from their body. Gods that had magical bow and arrows that destroyed these massive warships. There was a Green Lantern. It was not in that you know, but it was a time when the, the tribes of men, Amazons, and Atlanteans got together with the other gods to battle Steppenwolf, to drive his forces off Earth, to break apart the, 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 the unity, which was the three mother boxes, and hide them. Steppenwolf is now back. Why? Because Superman is dead. Death of the Plutonian made him kind of go, I can take over Earth, destroy Earth, and then rec re reclaim my position as one of the new gods. He goes to Themyscira. Whoops up. Goes to Atlantis. Not as well guarded as Themyscira. He battles Mira. Nicene Mira. Amanda Heard did a good job for the small screen that she had. I like they used, the, they used her, uh, her hard water abilities. It worked, worked well. It was enough for Cameron to go, who is she? She seems like she's powerful. You know what that means? That means they now have two powered women, and this was their first major film to do the whole team. Kudos to them. So, of course, by the time we get the team together, it's like, well, several has two boxes, okay? Where's the third box? Cyborg's like, I know where it is. I'll take you to it. And that's like, well, this thing's really powerful. Yeah. Now I should mention, by this time, they've all fought Steppenwolf, and he beat them. It's lucky that Aquaman showed up to kind of save the day for him. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we, we lack the ability to fight him. Period. We use Mother Box Bringer Superman. Wait, what? It's like, So, they used Mother Box and the uh, Kryptonian Ambiotic Chamber to bring Superman. He doesn't come back happy. Cyborg, since he's part of Mother Box, technically, reviews Superman as a threat, attacks Superman. So now, you have Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg trying to fight Superman. They do an okay job. Flash, who by this time is shown to be much faster than Super than a Wonder Woman, is now trying to effectively get behind Superman. Superman, while holding off the other three, is able to turn and look at him. And now Flash is like, yeah, I've got the... Oh, crap. I barely have a speed edge. So now these two are fighting effectively like in a speed force battle. <clears throat> Flash loses. Batman shows up. Superman's gonna kill Batman. Because he just came back from the dead, his mind's kind of cloudy, and people try to attack him. They bring like Lois Lane, Lois Lane calms him down, and now we get to one of the bizarre parts where it's Lois Lane and Clark Kent at the Kent farm, and it feels like they're in CGI corn. I don't know. Establishing shots, they show people saying it in corn. I'm just saying if these were shots are done later. But it didn't feel like they're standing in a cornfield. The amount of money they had, they should be able to find a spot where they had corn. Or they could have just like made fake corn. But that was kind of odd. The CGI goes from being very good to feeling like they were running low on time. Which just, it made the made film, film just feel kind of odd in some moments where the CGI just wasn't finished. <clears throat> so they brought someone back from the dead and they're like alright we kind of need him to face this guy and it's like, these boxes only came to life because Superman was dead so they face they get again he's got all three boxes 
That's a pretty good plan as to what to do. So they try to have Batman hold up from the parademons. Cyborg's interfacing with the three mother boxes to keep them apart as best he can. Flash trying to keep bugs off of Cyborg. Aquaman and Wonder Woman trying to fight Steppenwolf. They're not losing horribly, but they're barely holding on. Until Superman shows. And Superman shows that he is vastly more powerful than the League. And he pretty easily defeats Steppenwolf. And he's able to fight him while doing other things. Because he's... Everyone else is here. And he's... Whoop. Steppenwolf is above Wonder Woman, above Aquaman. Superman's above Steppenwolf. Then they finally defeat him, and the boom, oh, boom door opens up, swallows him up. And they discuss what they're going to build for effectively their Hall of Justice. It's like a table for six, with room for more. What I liked is during the opening, where they're showing the DC Comics thing, they show multiple superheroes. They show a Green Lantern. They even show a Trousis in the background. So, the nice thing is that the Mormon has access to all of the characters. I mean, that, that allows them to do whatever they want to do for a movie. And I'll be honest, they've actually really turned it around. I thought Man of Steel was good. Is it an amazing film? No, it's a good film. Felt like it was it was dark, which I'm fine with. Superman vs. Batman, Dawn of Justice. Felt like it needed to be made just to kill Superman to get us to the Justice League movie. It's a transitional piece. It's like, here's Wonder Woman, here's Batman, here's a transition piece into this movie. You could almost skip Man of Steel. You would just need to know, yeah, Zod was the main villain, he's dead, they use his body to make another villain. Suicide Squad, that's, you don't need to have seen that. Wonder Woman, you know? You would have just known, needed to know about the death of Steve Trevor. I mean, this film, it built tangentially on the other films, which was nice. I mean, as long as you knew who Wonder Woman was, you knew who Steve Trevor was, and you knew Superman was dead, that's pretty much all you really needed to know about this, going into this film. You didn't need to know a lot about character interactions. I mean, they did enough to kind of explain the plot along as it moved. So that was nice. It was a standalone, as you could kind of make one of these sort of films that falls into a universe. 